Hey, good morning. Happy May. Uh, it's been a while, like always. Um, but you know, you need to have good content. So for me, it's been a busy winter and spring already. Yeah, those are empty thread and wire spools. That's how I influence. Anyway, um, geez, where to begin? So I'm actually going to do a fly you guys are pretty familiar with, but I've had a lot of questions on it because um, one of the major ingredients in it, body glass. Yeah, that's a bulk bag. You can't get this stuff anymore. It's a uh, stretchy vinyl colored material that was produced by Sibai. So everybody who like to tie this little rock candy larva that I have here, and I'm going to show you how to do one of these today with another material, which is essentially the same thing. Um, people freaking out. Can't get this stuff anymore. You know, I can't tie that fly. It's a good little anchor caddis larva pattern. And it's caddis time, folks. We got caddis all over the place. Closing in on Mother's Day. So um, I'll show you something that you can use with a little bit of ingenuity and some uh, alcohol-based markers to um, get yourself back in the game. So I've got a little list for you people who are really just tune in for the rants because I know you like that. Um, huh, where to begin? I might not be able to do all these today. But first things first. So about a month ago, a lot of you saw me basically offload all my ultraviolet resin. And you're probably scratching your head wondering what the hell is going on. Because I was probably one of the biggest proponents of using UV resin in fly tying. And it pains me to have to do this. But because I really like the ease of that stuff and the durability of it and everything that it stands for. However, uh, and I didn't even know he put this video out there until I did some perusing last night. But a uh, good friend and fellow fly tire. Uh, Tim Flagler put a video out about a year, little over two years ago um, in regards to ultraviolet resin safety. Like Tim, uh, I started experiencing these crazy rashes and breakouts in my face, up my nose, scaly dried skin, eyes closing shut um, about three and a half years ago. I've been using UV resin in my tying for a little over 13 years now. And you guys all know the amount of flies that I tie and literally the gallons of this stuff that I've gone through. And it's really freaked me out, to be quite honest with you, because I'm starting to read some pretty bad things about what UV resin can do. And I know Bob Popovic's talked to me about it when I first started tinkering with the stuff and, you know, to be careful and whatnot. And you know how it is when you're younger, you're stupid and, uh, you, you know, you're a little ignorant to things. And I probably should have listened to him because now I'm kind of concerned about what were the cumulative effects of my using this stuff and what did it do to me, do to me and potentially do I have any negative effects down the road. Um, so, you know, there's not a lot out there on this. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate on this. It's like, oh, here you go. You're a flip flopper. You know, you use this stuff for years and now you're not using it. Well, you know what? Like... You're right, but my health is of utmost importance to me because I want to see my kids grow up. I want to see my grandkids. I want to continue to fish, fish with other people and do this stuff. So I made a conscious decision to stop using it altogether. Now, I got some rather funny, comical to me, answers from people in the industry as to ways to safely utilize this stuff. And I say comical because it's just ridiculous. So... You know, you can wear glasses. Yeah, that's going to help protect your eyes from the ultraviolet light when you use the torch and all this stuff. But th at the end of the day, like, you really need a highly aerated area where you can pull these fumes out of here. Because the fumes are what's the problem. So, and that's what it took some serious figuring out on my behalf was giving me fits. Because when I used exponentially large amounts of this stuff for some of the large uh, wholesale orders of flies that I sent out, this is when I would get these intense reactions to it. I mean, if you pull up Tim Flagler's video, you'll see his eyes swollen shut and stuff like that. Multiply that times five with white scaly skin that looks like psoriasis. That's how bad it was for me. So, 
um, you know, wearing glasses and a full mask is probably not going to really do anything um, to help prevent you from breathing in those fumes. I had somebody tell me that, oh, I keep a small fan, and I know Tim shows a little small fan on his desk. That's just not feasible for what I do. Um, you know, I, if I put a fan on here, or I set up a whole other scenario or situation in place for myself to tie and use resin, I'm going to be blowing materials all over the place, you know? And I don't think that that's a logical answer to something that's probably not too good for you. So my answer for me, and it's not for everyone, because, you know, it's hard to replace ultraviolet resin, to be quite honest with you. The epoxy, you're getting fumes from epoxy too, so I would think over time that's not good for you as well. So, you know, I had to do some thinking, and I made a decision that I'm not going to use it anymore. You know, shoot me. I, I don't care. So I've gone to all water-based solvents. Um, I'm using all loon stuff now, and you know, it, it adds a little time to my to my tying at the end when I've got to put some thread cement on there, and I use hard head or I use soft head now. I, I coat all the eyes on my streamers now, even the Avengers with soft head. It's water-based. You know, the stuff is it's white in the bottle, but when it dries, it's clear. So I use that now. You know, and, and I'm not even messing with flex resin anymore either. I've gone back to all liquid fusion, and you can use liquid fusion. You can water it down and do different things with it. It's a lot less toxic. So I, um, I'm, that's me. You do what you want. But to me, the reactions and the risk far outweighed the durability and the use of it. So that was my deal. Um... Next big thing is, here's the thing, folks, and I know a lot of people, I'm going to get hate for this too, and I really don't care because I'm kind of at my wit's end with it all. I am all about helping people, okay? But I guess there is kind of a bit of a line. You know, if you're that person that is constantly asking for information, anytime somebody puts something up on social media, and, and I'm just going to use this as a disclaimer, social media is really ruining a lot of things. My, if I sit there and I look at my inst Instagram page for my business for more than five minutes, and I'm even to the point now where I just don't even want to look at it, and I start thumbing through all the things that are on there, because as you amass followers, you start to see things that come into your feed. Listen, social media is Disneyland, people. It, I write myself and get myself back to normal by getting outside. Whether I share that with you or not is my personal thing. I don't feel compelled that I have to share all my fishing excursions anymore. And you know what? I would argue that by doing that all the time, listen, we get a great fish. We want to share it with people and show how great it is. Good for you. Awesome. I'm all about it. But the constant every single day, the same thing over and over again, it's like what? it's a giant insecurity. And I hate to say it, but you know, the same people who are complaining about the pressure on their watersheds are the same ones that are posting, constantly having to post pictures of fish, don't care about their backgrounds. There's like... People talk about fishing etiquette. I think we all need to start looking in the mirror about social media etiquette. It's another topic for another day. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Today, I'm going to show you how to tie. Rant over, by the way. I don't know if you noticed too, but I got a lot more light in here. Um, if you saw online, I got some new lights put in the shop, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. We're going to tie one of these little guys today. I'm going to show you a material that you, is readily available that you can get um, that will give you the ability to tie this particular fly. Enough of my rant. Let's get tying. All right, so um, if you recall, you've seen it in my old video, uh, the rock candy larva that I tie. And I tie this anywhere from like, you know, a size six, which is massive. There's really not a caddis larva out there that big, right? And a slew of colors all the way down to about a 16. And uh, a 16 is kind of like, you know, the smallest size you can really tie these in um, just because of the limitations of the material. So, you know, body glass by Sibai is no longer, you know, being produced. And as you'll see, this is just a wonderful, great little product that's very stretchy. I believe it's a vinyl. You know, this is a green. You can see you can stretch this stuff to crazily thin. But it has definitely a point where it's not going to stretch anymore. And when you get to that, that's going to have kind of your limiting factor. So there's another material that's out there by Hairline. Hairline actually manufactures this. It's the same exact thing. And it comes in like three or four sizes. There's a small, a medium, and a large. 
the large is like three quarters of an inch the small is an eighth of an inch and it's called stretchy fly skin clear comes in one color okay now you're probably like great now I gotta dye it, I gotta clean it, color it, all this good stuff it's really not a big deal okay I'm gonna show you how to do that so all you need because this is a vinyl it's a stretchy type of vinyl this is the same material right here folks it's in, this is just clear what I typically do in order to make your colors and you'll see it stretches just like it it's actually a little bit more durable alright what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to get yourself some alcohol based markers you can get these anywhere Amazon will sell them you can get a whole pack like I have here which has like 60 different colors in it and these markers are wonderful because they come with two distinct sides on them they got a fine tip on one end and they got a wide angled tip on the other so what you're gonna wanna do and listen you have to be alcohol based or else this stuff's gonna run right and you can kinda see I've already colored this one here now the trick is is you're gonna wanna color this stuff when it's stretched out so you wanna stretch it to its maximum capacity and then color it because otherwise it's gonna unless you want it to be more opaque and I'll show you what I mean by that so if I just colored this guy and you're gonna do wanna do both sides I just color this guy as you can see here you know and the more marker you put on the better best bet is to just try and make one long swoop or else you'll get like a spot in there right now if I just leave that on there and I go to stretch it it's gonna get a little bit transparent that might be the the way you want it if you want to have a deeper darker color and you, you need to let this stuff sit to dry for a little bit before you use it otherwise most of it's going to rub off what you can also do and here I'll stretch this out a little bit there's easier ways to do this you could stretch this out on a table you take this and you stretch it as far as you can and then you color it and if you just do a little bit so I did one stroke there it's relatively transparent one there one down the other side just like you see here and then when you release that as you'll see it's gotten a little bit darker right depending on what color you use now the other nice thing you can do with this too is you can you can use different color markers to do different types of effects so if you wanted to put like say you know a dark line on there on along one edge so that you can have kinda like a rib you could take your black marker here just like you see come right down the edge now the hard part with that is is if you don't control it that's what you're gonna have happen like I did there so my suggestion is if you're gonna do that you take the fine point end you stretch your material out and you run it right down the edge ever so gently that way when you go to tie it in you have a nice dark edge there you can do some crazy stuff you can do bright colors whatever you want with it it's completely up to you but the nice thing is although it requires you to do a little bit of coloring you can now make you know caddis larva in pretty much any color you want and you can adjust it by just buying one material and then a whole series of markers so. alright so we've got our hook in the vise now now we're going to tie our rock candy this is a super super fast fly you guys have seen this before but just kind of as a refresher I'm going to restart it kind of number 14 um, curved uh, nymph hook in the voice you can use whatever you'd like this is actually a partridge but there's so many different ones out there I just dropped a little bit of um, gel Loctite on there and now we're just gonna take and do a few turns of 15 thousandths lead wire or lead free whatever you'd like to use to go along with that tungsten bead just push it right up in there get your pliers flat specifically non serrated just kind of flatten that wire out that will help you get a nice little taper for your underbody now we're going to take some green uni stretch 
because it takes up less material to wrap your underbody. Just like you see here. Kind of build a nice cone taper. Cover up all that underwire. Whip finish. Then you're going to take your thread. And if you want like this to have a hot thread to it, then I'd use the chartreuse, but you could use a regular green. It's an 8-out Vivas. Just going to take a few turns. Working my way down the body of the fly. Gonna take that colored material that we had. And if you got a good, my scissors are shot. I'm in the process of needing some new ones here, folks. But you're gonna cut the tip of it right to a point, as you see here. So that when you put it at a 45 degree angle, you just kind of catch the angle of it. Make a few turns and then just start pulling that material tight right down deep into the bend. Once you do that, I kind of just invert it. I just give it a good stretch. The more you stretch it, the tighter it becomes. Three turns over, three in front, two more. Trim it. Wrap over that just to make sure it doesn't come apart. And then just use some black squirrel and rabbit as a collar. Cover that up. Half hitch. And when you use this bright thread, it'll give you a nice little hot collar. If that's what you're after. I use whip finish tool at the end after I put a little head cement on there about four or five turns. Put my thumb in there to make sure it cinches down tight. And then that's a fly. That's a little rock candy uh, larva. That's a number 14. You can pick it out if you want. It's a great little anchor fly and killer little caddis larva. Bounces around the bottom. And that's it. And that's how you guys can make that substitute for the body glass. Hope that works out for you. It's caddis time, and good luck.